Six hundred years before Jesus Christ, a certain king had a special dream. This was no ordinary dream, and this dream is still speaking to us today, 2,500 years later. What is prophecy? Simply, prophecy means a word from the Lord, or a message from the Lord. Prophecy is often a prediction of future events, but not always. In general, prophecy means a message from the Lord. And why does the Bible have prophecy? First, prophecy increases our faith in God and in the Word of God. Prophecy shows that God is involved in this world and is in control. Prophecy, true prophecy, lifts up Jesus Christ and contains a powerful message about our Savior. And further, prophecy provides comfort, help, insights, and knowledge and can decrease our fears. Prophets and prophecy are a very important part of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. They are a very important part of God's plan. Prophets and their messages are very close to the heart of God. Let's begin Daniel chapter 2. Babylon was a world empire in 600 BC. Babylon is in the area of what we call modern-day Iraq. King Nebuchadnezzar was the ruler of Babylon. In Daniel, a loyal Hebrew and faithful to the God of heaven was captive there. One night, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. The Bible describes in Daniel chapter 2 verse 1, Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. The king wanted to understand this mysterious dream. So he called all of his wise men together, but they couldn't figure it out. Not only were the wise men spiritual frauds, but they would dance for the king the way Herodias' daughter danced for Herod. O oh, king, live forever! Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar was smarter than that. But in his hot temper and rage, the king sentenced all the wise men to death, including innocent Daniel and his friends. Daniel was in a persecutive pickle. Suffering for righteousness' sake, he besought the God of heaven for help. Daniel prayed to God, asking him to reveal the dream. God answers prayer. God gave Daniel the answer to the dream. It turns out that King Nebuchadnezzar's dream was a prophecy that God had given him, and God also provided the interpretation. So Daniel encouraged and with his spirit lifted up, praised God, and came in before the king, saying, verse 28, But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Here is the prophecy, starting in Daniel, verses 31 through 35. You, O king, were watching, and behold a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. The image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like the chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found, and the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. To repeat the prophecy of verses 31 through 35, the Bible says, This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. The image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. Then a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet and broke them in pieces. And the metals were crushed together, and no trace of them was found. The stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. 
This is the prophecy that God gave to Daniel to describe to King Nebuchadnezzar. What in the world does this prophecy mean? The good news is the Bible interprets the dream. This is the correct way to interpret Bible prophecy. Let the Bible interpret itself. This way we avoid private interpretations. Interpretations that are personal, unique, individual, spurious, or wrong. Let the Bible interpret itself. Daniel says, chapter 2, verse 36, This is the dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. Here, Daniel gives the interpretation. Speaking to King Nebuchadnezzar, you are this head of gold. The Bible leaves no room for guessing here. Daniel is talking to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and its kingdom, and he says, you are this head of gold. The head of gold represents the king and his kingdom, Babylon. As history shows, Babylon was in power from 605 BC to 539 BC until it fell to the Persian Empire under Cyrus the Great. And the prophecy goes on. Verse 39, But after you, speaking about after Babylon, the head of gold, but after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. Notice the Bible is interpreting the metals as kingdoms, specifically world powers having dominance in the earth. The Persian Empire followed Babylon and was comprised of two factions, Media and Persia, two sides, notice two arms. Just as silver is inferior to gold, the splendor of the Medo-Persian Empire was inferior to Babylon. In the third kingdom of bronze, Greece followed Medo-Persia, ruling from 331 to 168 BC. And next were the legs of iron.